the takeover. Okay, did we start? Yeah, we did. That's how I start. Takeover. We're rolling on sound. We're rolling on sound. We're rolling on camera. We're ready to go. The back door's locked. Everything's going well. Mark's doing okay. He's ready to go. He's fine. We uh, we don't have to hear his voice until later, until we get to the dating detective. But well, welcome back to the takeover. And we we're happy to be back. Who am I talking to? I'm not even looking into the camera, but that's fine. It's been a rusty start. You know why? Because I was away for a little bit. Mark was away for a little bit, so we had to we had to stock up on episodes. We had to stock up on episodes. This is how the industry works. Sometimes you stock up on episodes. Sometimes you watch a TV show and there's 10 episodes. They don't shoot those episodes week by week. They shot all of those 10 episodes before you even got to your couch to watch TV. What am I talking about? It doesn't matter. We're just letting you know that my voice is raspy again. What does that mean? Does that mean I was in South Florida drinking a lot? Probably. Yes. That's what that means. Am I still irresponsible? And I'm going to be 37 in two months. It's okay. It's okay because life is on track. And that's what this episode is going to be called. Life is on track with my guest, Joe and Amir. We're bringing Joe and Amir back. Ch- Ch- Chudwin was going to come back, but you know what? We forgot. We forgot about him. It's easy to forget about my guest because sometimes they're boring and funny, but it's funny to have boring guests. And that's why we're bringing them back because they're my favorite boring guests I'll ever have, Amir and Joe. So they're going to be on the episode again this week. But that being said, I was in Florida and every time I go to Florida, you know what happens to Michael? He gets emotional. Michael gets emotional when he goes to Florida because he's he gets he he sees his friends and the family and the kids and I stay with the kids and I play with the kids and I'm Uncle Mike and they react differently to me because I'm an abnormal human. You got to imagine imagine this. Imagine if you're a little kid, you're 5, you're 8, you're 9 and then you I'm saying things differently that you would never normally hear because that would be inappropriate. And I don't go too inappropriate. I'll just say stuff like, hey, your mom poops on your dad. Simple poop and pee jokes crush with little kids. Like when you say, hey, did you know your dad poops on your mom? They belly laugh. They're like, what? Why? How could you say that? You can't say that. Like it blows their mind that an adult says that. Say, says that. It's all right, Mark. I mess up. I got to get the coffee going. <sighs> you know, let's settle down a little bit. We got, we're going to get back in the groove. I just landed. I landed at 10 a.m. And we came here and we have to shoot this episode because it comes out tomorrow. And we, we just, we just want to get back on track. I know that you're looking at me like, what's going on? We, we, we're, there's a bad start to a show. It's not every show is going to be great. That's just how it is. If you shoot a show every week, you can't expect it to be the best it's ever going to be. It's just this is how it is. All right? I I probably look like shit. I probably am sounding like shit. Right now, you're probably like, what is this show going to be about? You said it was going to be about something else. Totally forgot what I said it was going to be about. But I do have notes that I want to go into. And the first topic of this week is ice cream cones. Thank you. I will not deal with ice cream cones. And I'll tell you what, Mark is going to disagree with this, but ice cream cones is not the way to go. It's always a cup. Put it in a cup. An ice cream cone is just going to get all over your hands. It's dirt. Nobody has ever, nobody's successfully had ice cream in a cone and walked away not needing to wash their hands. Why would you want to wash your hands? You can't do it. It's impossible. You're going to get sticky. So let's just not deal with that. I'm not seven. I don't want sticky hands. I don't want an ice cream cone. It's not even that great. Like a chocolate chip cookie is great. If there was an ice cream cone that was a chocolate chip cookie, then I would do an ice cream cone. But an ice cream cone isn't like, oh my God, that made the ice cream experience way better. You think it did? All right, Mark, chime in. You think an ice cream cone is way better? Absolutely. Because I don't have to throw anything away. It's done when I'm done eating. It's gone. Do you have to wash your hands? No, I'm not a child. I eat quick enough so that it's not dribbling out underneath. And what I even <laughs> like to do is when I eat the ice cream, you push it deeper into the cone. So you basically have the ice cream through the whole cone and you finish it. Mark, I understand what you're saying, but you're lying. 
You're lying. I will eat an entire ice cream cone on camera to show it can be done without washing your hands. It's a lie. You have to. You're going to get, even if it, if you eat it fast enough, there's still going to be from your breath drizzled. It's going to get, because cause my you knew where my argument was going to be. You're like, I don't have to throw anything. I was like, washing your hands takes more time than throwing something away. I, I think I know what the problem is. You're spending more time time talking with your ice cream than actually eating the ice cream i'm an eater i'm an eater over a talker one of my biggest flaws in life is that i don't talk when i eat i need to start eating slower you know what i just realized actually side note i have an eating disorder i realize i have an eating disorder now i know that if you're looking at me right now you'd be like michael you don't have an eating disorder that's that can't be true because my body looks regular i have a regular body where where people are like whoa he's handsome does he does he have a six pack? Then I take off my shirt and and people are like, sorry. That's actually a true story. One time when I played for a um, kickball league in Fort Lauderdale after college, these were a popular thing. We were uh, we would go party in a bar afterwards, and I had my shirt on and I had a headband on, and I looked like I looked like I was in shape. You know, my my arms looked okay. And I remember I was walking by, and this girl looked at me and she goes, Oh wow, look at you! And she pulls up my shirt. Lifts up my shirt and goes, oh, I'm sorry, and put it back down. That's what I am. That's what I am to a T. That is the type of person I am. I'm a regular guy. You're like, oh, does he have a good butt? Then take my shirt off, and you're like, oh, okay, never mind. I thought you were a six-pack guy. You're a realistic guy. I'm the guy that a girl goes, oh, that's probably what my husband will look like. I'm not the guy that a girl goes, wow, I would love to have that type of guy. She looks at me and she goes, oh, I'd love to have that type of guy. Then she sees me without my shirt off and she goes, oh, I can have that guy. That's the type of guy I am. So I, 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 I'm a regular looking guy and I've, my whole life I've been trying to have a six pack and I don't think I ever will, but it's still not impossible. At 37, there's still a chance but you know what will help me get there? Not eating ice cream and not eating ice cream cones that not even eating ice cream with an ice cream cone because also it's not that big of a deal. Okay. Some, some people are like, Oh, I want, I want ice cream. You'll go with a group of people and you're like, yeah, let's get ice cream. And then there's people who are like, yeah, I'll just take a scoop in a, a cup. And that immediately makes me go, this guy gets it. Or this person gets it. I, I want to be more more involved with that type of person where as a person who orders an ice cream cone that's when I'm like okay he he he's not he's not fully aware with what life is about because you're you're going for pure excitement you're 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 caught it you're caught into it you're caught into it you're thinking like this is the way life should be I should get an ice cream cone you're the person who buys a red ferrari you buy a red ferrari you're a moron that's not what you're supposed to do because that's how that's how it was presented to you you're like oh ferrari red let me get it no you don't do a red ferrari you do a navy blue ferrari with tan leather or you do black on black. Like there's so many other options to do than the red Ferrari. I get the red Ferrari is the way to go, but the red Ferrari is an ice cream cone with ice cream. I want my scoops in a cup. Does that make sense? Do you disagree on the Ferrari parts? I absolutely disagree on the Ferrari part because it's known as Ferrari red. Ferrari red is it, it is a color, but um, yeah, I saw like that no too. Like no one talks about Ferrari navy blue. No, but it's so sweet. It really is a sweet. It's a I'm sweet. I'm not disagreeing. Yeah. I'm but not you, disagreeing. I don't think Ferrari makes a bad color, but Ferrari red is a special red. But it's for amateurs. It's what you do when you're like, I'm excited. I'm gonna buy it. So that's all I'm saying. And it's what people who buy ice cream cones do. Well, They're excited. They, They're like ice cream. I think the excitable people, like the super douches, they do the chrome bullshit now. Well, that's or the neon. Well, that's like. Rapper stuff, crap, whatever. But my point is, we're not doing. We're, we don't do ice cream cones. We're not doing ice cream cones. It's not really the best way to live. Another thing, I was my friend. I was. We were actually discussing this before the show. I would prefer to make way less money to wake up at eleven a.m. versus making a lot of money and waking up at five a.m. Because I think. Happiness is ultimately the major goal. And I think that people who are waking up at 5 a.m. are not as happy as people that wake up at 11 a.m. I think it's a fact. And then some of you be like, oh, I could own four wave runners if I woke up at 5 a.m. But you're going to be tired and not get to use those those wave runners. So, And I'd rather just have one wave runner. And you're like, what do wave runners have to do with waking up early? Here's the point. Would you rather wake up at 11 a.m., 
for seventy five thousand dollars a year, and you know you kind of get off whenever, but you wake up at eleven a.m. You're never really tired. You go out, you stay up late sometimes, but you're getting seventy five thousand dollars a year, or for two hundred thousand dollars a year, you're waking up at five a.m. That means you're never staying up late. You're never staying up that late because you're always getting up early. You're always tired. When you're up, nobody else is up. You're not really socializing with people. You're not as happy. Things are not as cool. People are like, you want to go get a drink after work? No, because I got to get up at 5 a.m. It's just not as fun. You gave me too much for the 200000 because then I'd work 10 years and be able to do five years of no work. You'll be too old. You won't be into it anymore. <laughs> the things you're going like, to, well, when people say that, it's like, oh, you're not going to be into the things that you were in as your 30s that you're going to be into your 50s. In your 50s, you're going to go horseback riding. I just turned 36. I like, I'm more midlife crisis you, than I am. You're younger than me. Yeah. You look a lot older than me. But I, I disagree. You, you look a lot older than me. I'm a lot fitter than you. Fit? Yeah. You think you could run further than me? Absolutely. If we said tomorrow morning, let's wake up, who could run the furthest? You think I'm going to run? You think you're going to run further than me? I'll run further than you. I'll run a half marathon tomorrow. I'll do a full. You could do a, a full marathon tomorrow. Is dude, that real? Dude. I did a half one two years ago. Okay. Yeah. But remember, I also ran a sport for 12 years where I had to do 12 straight hours a day and I was putting in 20 mile days. Hold on. When's the, what's the furthest you ran in the last year? In the last year? Yeah. About like 10 miles. Okay. So he could do it. He could run 10. All right. It's a harder than people think. Oh, it absolutely is. Who can bench more? Me for sure. <laughs> How much? Oh, you name whatever you, whatever can you, you can put, do, can, I'll do more. Can you put up 225 10 times? I bet you I could. I can't. I can't. I'm not going to the combine, but. <laughs> no, that's true. A um, few more things. Uh, each week, wh where are we? Flashback. Flashback. Every episode, hit up here. Uh, check out FB Comedy Mike. They have an open mic here every day uh, for comics that want to try some stuff out uh, now that things are more opened up. Comedy's back, baby. Comedy is coming back. You're seeing flyers pop up. People are doing it. Uh, every every episode is brought to you by the Comedy Showcase app. You can download that. Check out up and coming comedians. Showcase their stuff. Uh, you can subscribe subscribe to specific comedians, and all the money goes back to those comedians. So check that out. And also, we got some upcoming dates. I have. Don't take this off. I was because I got a better idea. Mark, get more stickers. Whatever, we'll fix that. But uh, upcoming dates, uh, May 1st, Jam in the Van, two shows, fun people. Check it out on my website, michaelinochi.com. And then also I'll be in Desert Springs. It's right near Palm Springs. Me and Craig Conant have a show out there April 28th. You can get tickets on michaelinochi.com. Make sure you check those out. Maybe we'll have Mark come out there and shoot the show. If he wants to, if he wants to go out there and waste his time. Um, I had a couple more things, but I think, where are we at on time? How are we doing? Like 10 minutes in? 13? All right, let's get to the dating detective. Let's see what questions we got this week. Make sure you submit your questions, uh, and then I will see you guys next week. Bye. <laughs>
would you assume if someone texted you after the date that they wanted to see you again? No, not necessarily. I, I, I think that, man, how do I say this? I always think that, I don't think a guy, I don't think men think this way. I, th I think this is definitely more of a, uh, uh, I don't, here's the deal. I don't think, I think you should keep doing that and say thank you for that. I think that that is a nice thing. And then even if you don't, I think a guy will pick up that you don't want to go out with him when you continue to be short on text. A guy will pick up that you don't want to go out with him when he tries to make more plans and you're like, oh, I'll let you know. That's the easiest way out of something like, hey, I'm busy this week, but I'll let you know. And then if he hits you up again, you're like, I'm not sure I'll let you know. If he does it three times, then the guy just doesn't get it. But I think then you're not ghosting him and then you appreciate his time. And you're like, hey, thank you for the date. That was really sweet. You would, if a girl was into me, she would be like, hope to see you again. Right? She'd be like, hey, thank you. That was a fun date. Hope to see you again. I don't think you're leading him on just by saying thank you for the date. I think that's a nice, per you're a nice person. And if you think that you're leading men on too much, then it's what happens after the next text. It's what you're saying in response to whatever they say. I think this is a, a really minimal problem, but I think that a lot of women maybe feel this way. They're like, um, I, I, I think it's better that to carry yourself going forward saying thank you than to not say anything at all. To make a guy be like, well, what a fucking bitch. Like if I went on a date and it was fine, no sparks, but it was fine. And then I left the girl and I was like, uh, and I text her, have a good night. And then she didn't respond. I'd be like, fuck off. You're just like, so I think you're fine. I'm not, you're not leading me on because you said, thank you for a date. If anything, like if they, if they're taking that as, oh my God, she wants another date, then they're allowed to text you again, but you would be like, I'll let you know. Like you would just do the, I'll let you know text. I think it's a, a my, I think you should just continue to be a good person and not be a bitch. All right. Next one. It makes me so angry how weak and emotional I am perceived to be. I was so close to getting a girl, believe it or not. The problem was not the sex, but the emotions. After agreeing to have sex with me, she asked me what my biggest desire was. Being a young man with a lack of experience, I told her that I just wanted a girlfriend. I've never seen someone pull up their pants quicker, laugh my ass off. Before we even started, she refused because she thought I was clingy. I'm so angry now. I hate that word and I never want to be called it again. Am I clingy for having a conscious? Oh, poor guy. What world are we in where this would happen? Imagine, I, I don't feel like this. Sometimes I wonder if these are even real, but like imagine like I can't imagine ever being in a situation where I'm with a girl and she's asking me what you want out of things and you give the response you would think most women would want to hear. And she goes, oh, never mind and puts her pants back on. He's asking at the wrong time. Of course. We, we, I think we just went through this previously, too. Like to, literally she's getting undressed and she's like, what do you desire? And he's like, a girlfriend. Oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. You're saying, okay, you're, you're saying that, okay, you don't think she's really asking that question. You think she's just like, maybe, okay. So that's how it, an experience it is. Okay. You think she's actually trying to be sexy and he was like a girlfriend and she's like, what? But then. Why wouldn't she just laugh in his face and be like, no, that's not what I mean. Like, I don't know. To Listen, I get what you're saying, but also the way she's reacting is a little too much. I'm putting my pants on. I'm like, you're too clink. Like, what? Like, that's – if almost it's almost like she's got – a de like, she's being defensive and she's got a defense mechanism on. She's like, well, I'm actually clinging. I don't want to get hurt or something. Well, she's a girl from L.A. where, like, anywhere else – Maybe you, you, you told, well, I, I look at it this way. It, girls in LA never want to be tied down. They always want to play the field, be available for whatever. Anywhere else in the country, it's the opposite. They want to be tied down. They're never available. She is clearly someone that's available and he wants to tie her down. She's just not into that. True. 
True. But his problem is he's got to um, – he's – It was bad timing. Yeah. I, <laughs> Could she have been less harsh? Sure. We don't really know the context. I just – I also think he's – not experienced, and he needs to. Um, poor, this is not going to happen again. It's just not. That's just like one situation. Here's the thing: the email reads as he's like, "I'm sick and tired of being cling." Like nobody's going to think of you as clingy. You're just linked up with the wrong type of person. All right. Clearly, this girl was just looking for a hookup. And you were in a situation where it was a hookup. Now, if you had that conversation, it was bad timing. If you were out on a date with a girl and she was asking you that question, that wouldn't be a bad answer. That would be fine. If you're like a girlfriend, I'm looking for a girlfriend. If you're on a date with a girl and she asks you that, I'm looking for a girlfriend. If you're on a date with a girl and she's like, hey, I'm, uh, you know, I'm not looking for anything serious. Are you looking for something serious? And you said, yeah, I am. She's not going to think that. You're clingy either. Like you were just clearly in a situation where it was you guys were about to have sex and you said, I'm looking for a girlfriend. So that maybe scared her away. I don't think you have anything to worry about either. I think this is just a once in a it's a very rare situation you're going to find yourself in again. But also like, yeah, again, timing wise, don't talk about that stuff unless you are probably in a setting like we, we I think we discussed this last episode of like of when to talk about feelings with a girl. Don't do it post sex because it will hurt their feelings They'll, they won't take you serious so you're a bitch all right our third caller new to online dating need help so i've been talking to this guys for a while a little over a week he's really funny which is my number one priority he's college educated my personal preference doesn't mean I look down on anyone who doesn't have a degree. A little nerdy, and he seems to have his head on right in general. He's really checking all my boxes. My issue is that he's not as responsive by text as I would like. I know we're super fresh, but this is something that should I even bother bringing it up before we meet. It's not even like he doesn't respond, but it will be hours or the next day before I get a response, and it's always longish messages no one word replies but i guess it doesn't feel like he's making any effort to prolong the conversation and i'm hyper aware and try not to be that super needy or clingy girl but it's frustrating i'm very close to losing his number deleting hinge and giving up for 2021 deleting hinge it's on hinge um shout out to hinge they used to yeah okay hold i <laughs> What? She's a clanger, dude. <laughs> no, I think that um, there is some truth to uh, text rapport. When you are into someone, I think there is like, I mean, even when I met my girlfriend, like I was more responsive than I normally was. I was a short answer guy. Hours in between. Like I, I, I that was the key thing for me. If a guy is not responding hours in between texts, I don't think he's on the same page as you. That's for sure. But I don't think a guy's really into you if he's taking four hours to respond to you. I will say this. He's not then giving one more answers back. He's providing long answers. That, like, was, con that was contradicting, yes. Like, that's more than I do for my wife. Well, we, we, <laughs> when, you know, when you're in something, you know yeah. you have it. Yeah, it's yeah. different. But I, I agree that even if I even if I did short response and I was like kind of I, I, I've been in situations where I was dating girls from dating apps and I was like that, too. And you could tell that even when we hung out, they would say they would say, you don't seem like you're interested over text. And I'd be like, yeah, I'm not the best texter. And I would always say that to girls. I'm not the best texter. And then when I met a girl I liked, I was a good texter, actually. The thing about this is. Yes, he's doing these long – I mean, what does he do? Is he a very hardworking, busy, busy guy? That could also be a thing too. But if it's just like you're a college kid or if he's always on his phone when you're with him, then then you know he's kind of like setting a tone to be like, I'm not looking for anything serious or I just see this as a casual dating situation. I do think – I do think – 
text your text relationship is a big indicator whether a guy it wants to be serious with you. I just I, in my personal experience, if I am in if I'm attracted to a girl and and I see her as something more than just a hookup or something like that, I am definitely I'm definitely more engaged with her and I won't leave her. God forbid. I I, I mean even when I first uh, was talking to my girlfriend, I remember like I went hours without without hitting her up and I was like, Hey, sorry, this is why I had an exp- I had an explanation for why it took so long. So, I mean, yes, I think if, uh, you know, I don't, you know, I don't know. I just think that if, uh, that's the case, sure. I, I, I think that you're right that he's maybe, but don't give up, I guess. I don't know if any of this is actually good advice. Our, our guests are here, aren't they? You guys want to walk in right now during this? We'll just lead them into this question. Let's hear what they – I actually want to hear what Amir and Joe have to say. Yeah, just come in. You just got to plug in though. Yeah, yeah. yeah How do you cool. feel? Did you miss – you missed the coaster. Oh, I, it just looks too nice to, to be used actually. Put Thank it you. on. Put Thank it you. On. you. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. I mean it's yeah. – the table looks clean. It cleaned it today. Oh, yeah, yeah. It looks good. And you brought your own little water. We provide water for our guests. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's all right. Yeah. It's zero water, so it's Z- good. Zero water is always good. Did you guys – so before you got in here, I was just talking about – this is funny because this this is probably has a lot to do with your guys' life. Online dating. Pretty, what, would you, what would you assume that? Yeah. I would say that you guys are pretty active on the online dating. Dating apps. Dating apps. Yeah. That's what online dating. Yes, dating apps, swiping, you know. Amir's getting a little nervous, as if he has like, girlfriends that are watching. The I'm podcast. not. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not on. The <laughs> like God forbid, they're, they're like, "Oh, Amir was on a podcast. Let's yeah. watch it this yeah. week." Nobody's nobody's watching it. We get three views, and it's us three, <laughs> and we just watch the one clips on Instagram. So not active. You so uh, so the girl wrote in on the last part for the dating detective, sir producer. Can we get the cap off of the goddamn table? Oh, I mean. It's not even on that one. Thank, thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Uh, she wrote in and she said uh, she's sick and tired. She's de- on these dating apps and she's texting with a guy, and she, he seems to check off all the boxes. But the one problem is he just seems unresponsive during text. Doesn't seem like he's too into it. And I'm say- saying, I was saying, listen, if there is one thing that is true, if you are into someone, you are responsive text do you ever go four or five hours without texting someone if you're if you're into them amir here's the thing i don't think that the text message frequency is determined by how much you like them because i suck at texting i don't text even if i like the person i I don't even i don't even know what to say Hmm. we know that you don't know what to say yeah Yeah, but i don't want to say anything either but you don't you don't leave a girl hanging for four hours no you say something but it's not like you you know some guys come up with like witty things to say sure 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 sure. but have you ever gotten four hours without texting someone back that you did like Uh, it's not common it could happen it could happen yeah yeah could happen why do you answer these questions like a politician (laughs) Like, he always reads deeper into the question. He's just asking. Well, don't you want a thoughtful answer? No. But you're missing a huge point of it. But she says that he never gives me the one-word answers quickly, but a few hours later... Paragraph answers. Oh, yeah, that's Mm. kind of weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That is weird. weird. Yeah. Why is that weird? Because it's like, what, why is he saving it all up? Why don't you just answer the question? Because maybe, come? what if he's busy and then he's just like, oh, let me catch up with everything and tell her what's going yeah, on. Yeah, that, that can be a thing. What about you, politician Amir? Yeah, I mean, I I would say it's it's like, yeah, it's like he, he's... Is there sound good? Is it not too far away? Okay. Yeah, I don't like the whole like uh, full sentence type of texting anyways to begin with, you know? Just spit it out, you know, like short answer, keep it more natural, I'd say. How's everything going? Not great. Okay, what's going on in here? <laughs> what's going on now? I mean, now, to be fair to the audience, this isn't a week later. We shot you guys' previous episode th- two weeks, three weeks ago, right? Yeah. So, oh, three weeks? What do you mean? No, what's not going on great? You look healthy. You look great. Well, you I both look, look like you woke up within the last two hours. Is that fair to say? I got up about 
12, 12.30, yeah. That is fair. What about you? I woke, I usually wake up at 5 because I got a lot running through my mind. 5 a.m.? Yeah, 5 a.m. Yeah. 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 You've been up yeah. since 5 a.m. Yeah, I mean, I took a, another nap later, but yeah, I get up early. What's going on? I just think about a lot of things. Yeah, that's called anxiety. <laughs> is it because is it help. because Dogecoin is spiking right no, now? No, they may or may not have some enemies. Almost at a dollar for the first time. Isn't that crazy? Oh, is it? Really? Yeah. What's it at? It was at nine. Nine. No way. Are you no, kidding me? There's no, Point. Way, there's no way Dogecoin got to a dollar. It, it was at. It's, it's financially impossible. It's been at five cents for a while, right? Yeah. It went up to nine cents today. No way, yeah, really? Not yeah, they're not a dollar. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm thinking ten cents. It's almost at ten cents. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, it's not fine. Yeah, but that's still like almost twice as much as yes. what it was. Watch. Which is, you know, a yeah. horrible. Yeah, I mean. Uh, it's yeah. going, babe. It's the highest it's ever been. Did you make some money? No. Yeah. It's never been higher than this. It's never hit ten cents. Satoshi Wise has been higher. It's never hit ten cents. It's at nine cents. Is this entertaining for the viewers? It doesn't matter. There's a hundred of them. <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. Wait, so what's wrong? I don't know. I mean, I may or may not have to start thinking about my own personal safety. What do you mean, Amir? Yeah, just... What, <laughs> no, what, this bothers you? Because you think he's just like... It's all bullshit with him. Right, yeah. What do you mean your well, own can, personal safety? No, I mean, I'm just I'm just saying... You think you're going to hurt yourself? No, not, my, not myself. You think there's people that want to hurt you? I may have to start showing them what's up. You, Amir. Well, you, you you can't do that. Amir. If what anything, is, run if you're going to be... What are you talking no, about? No, I'm nothing. I'm joking. I just feel like in general, our neighborhood, you know, it's it's gotten a little bit hairy and, you know... Hairy? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't shave a lot. Yeah. What's the adjective <laughs> The neighborhood there? doesn't shave. Sketchy. Sketchy? Sketchy, yeah, I've yeah. never heard someone describe sketchy as hairy. Really? No, like it's getting hairy, hairy out here. You heard that. It's getting hairy Very out here? Very rarely. Maybe once. Really? Wait, so you're scared. Yeah, I already don't like the topic. I do. You're all, so you're worried about your own well-being because of your neighborhood. Are you on the neighborhood app? No, I'm not. Okay. Citizen? I, I, I never go on that citizen thing, too, because I think it's stupid, and I think there's a lot more bullshit yeah. on there than it really is. It's We're, not. You should tell this guy right here. Bullshit. This guy's Bro, people will just pick. There was a guy walking down the street, and it looked like he had a knife, and it's just like some guy delivering Postmates. Like, people just write stuff. No, I mean, you know the ones that are bullshit, but a lot of them that happen, like, close by, you like, you hear the helicopters going above. We got two very paranoid guys on the episode today. (laughs) It's not paranoid, it's... Well, this guy thinks he's going to die. He's paranoid. About what? About the neighborhood. This has nothing to do with emotional relationships. No, I mean, here's the thing. I just want everyone to know that you can't fuck with me and I'm here and I'm holding it down in this neighborhood. And if anyone wants to mess around, so me, this is a bit, <laughs> it's a bit now, right? You're doing a bit. I mean, I kind of mean it, but it's also, but here's the thing. Amir, we never know if you really do mean anything. <laughs> you think you can't dish it out. I think he can dish it out sometimes, but he's just like physically. I mean. well, I oh, physically. Thing. No, I don't yeah. think there's, <laughs> I don't think he has a chance with any, I like, I think I, I wrestled in high school. Bro, this guy with saying what he's done in high school, you're like, I feel like in high school you you were like this. I was six foot four. What did you wrestle school. at? One yeah. Three? Huh? I was uh, 125. I, 125 really? homecoming like king high now. school kid. I'm sorry, 135. I was I was 135. 135. Yeah. I, I took well, that he was this big. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I dislocated my shoulder in senior year in my, the first tournament. Was I that did. when you got homecoming king? That was the year I got homecoming king, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> God, I'm the shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, keep it up. I think he just knows that he wants me to cut fun Instagram <laughs> clips now. Yeah. Because <laughs> he, he likes the fun Instagram clips. I still have, uh, I still have to post a kiss one. I oh, yeah. I got to right. that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got a little smooth. There were so many one. ones I had. Yeah. Well, should we start with now three weeks removed? New compliments for each other. Can we both go back and say one thing nice about each other now again? This is but I want you guys. Compliment I, want, I, I, want, I want you guys to go ahead and say something nice about me now. Oh, but well, you got to go first, dude. No, 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 no. Just say something nice about you. Yeah. I think you're very hardworking and very funny and uh, guys, very driven. 
<laughs> we can't do the same compliments for each other that you used last week on everyone else. No one said driven. I'm saying you're All driven. Right, driven. <laughs> yeah, no one also you are. Oh, yeah, somebody did say hardworking once. He did the hardworking and funny for Adam, thing yeah, yeah. for everyone. Yeah. I think he gave you funny, too. Yeah, no, yeah. I think with you, he ha- there was a very big pause. How's your relationship with each other right now, though? Fine. It's fine. Yeah. It's not the best it's been. It's been better at times. Um, I don't know. It's, it's pretty good right now. So he's he's grown back on you. Yeah, because we were having an issue, but it got resolved. Well, we're all having issues with Amir sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Do you know that, Amir? That sometimes you bother us? Yeah, it's been... It's been uh... Brought to my attention recently. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, but in a loving way. I, yeah. I, I laid the law down with them, so. You did? Yeah. Can we talk about it? Yeah, we, we can't no. talk. We, yeah, we can't talk about women anymore. <laughs> oh, what, way to go. Way to put your foot down. Like, I don't, you were just like, I don't want to hear about your woman problems. Right, right. <laughs> There's no it. women problem. There's, there's a lot. There's a, <laughs> but we don't, uh, that's it. Does that make you uncomfortable that he's bringing it up on the podcast? No, no. It's just, uh, it's just not true and that's okay so, no but we did agree not to talk about yeah i mean here's the thing there's in my life go. in my life in in all seriousness i yeah. i have a history of being very transparent with all of my problems you know everything we like that about you yeah 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 and, and you know i'm a very open book you know but i realize now what the effect of that is on and he's doing something else now because this isn't important to him. This no, podcast. I have this to si- a- text back. I could, I could see how that would hurt your feelings. It would hurt my feelings too if I was being vulnerable on a podcast and then someone picked up their phone. Yeah, Sorry. So I'm not, this isn't a priority. Were you for talking to me? No, no, no. I was just saying this Go to ahead. the group, to the few of you here. I so, think that. So um, I, I think that. Oh, so I was going to say, let me finish real quick. I just feel like I. Uh, it was a little selfish of me to just be, hey, hey, everybody, you know, I got these issues with these issues and, you know, whatever, and then work stuff, whatever whatever it is, whatever the problems are, I kind of dump them, and I feel like that isn't Well, it's fair. not selfish. There's, there's a line, though, because you're going to your problems with a bunch, to a bunch of mentally ill people. Yeah, that's another oh, issue. Oh, like who, other comedians? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's like me and everyone else who's got problems, so we're having an overload. It's like, oh, 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 oh. It's an act out. <laughs> yeah, do, Mike, what's a good act out of be, getting overloaded with problems? You can do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all of us. I, 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 I enjoyed it. It's, it's a little bit entertaining because it's almost like this guy is like, on the cusp of having a real mental breakdown. So it's kind of like, well, it's, yeah, how it's, can we save him? It's funny, but then I don't want to, you know, I don't want to gain. Well, here's what's annoying is you come to us for advice and then we give you advice and you've never fulfilled it. That's the problem. That's yeah. the problem. Well, that's what I've told well, That could be very irritating. Now, and it's not like you're 24. And again, we're not, you're not on the podcast. This isn't. To, this is an intervention. But it's fun. I mean, <laughs> it, this be. is content. Listen, this. I thought, I thought we were going to discuss. We're other things over Listen, <laughs> we're taking over your life. This is the time of Michael and Ochi. This could be a reoccurring thing. I mean, I think that you're going to be on the podcast a lot, and I think it's fun, and I think it's fun that we could sit here and analyze you, and maybe this could turn out to be a good thing for you. Yeah, this could be the therapy that you, yeah, this could that be you don't therapy. go get. And you'd be surprised. People sure. reach out to you and be like, I love you. People could fall in love with you for hearing you, and maybe you could find your soulmate uh-huh. that you've been searching for. Who? I don't think, I don't think so. I, th- I think you'd be surprised. I think I would you'd be, be surprised. surprised yeah. I think you give it a month, and these two episodes will will be sitting there, and and more and more people will see it, and you'll start getting some sliders. You'll get some sliders in there in those DMs. Oh, and, I thought you were talking about burgers. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to cut all of this. No, no, no there's no cutting. It. <laughs> this is great content. No, we don't edit. Yeah, you're okay. You're comfortable. Just take a deep breath. So what's going on? Is there somebody? No, no, no. Love? There's, there's. I, I, okay, so here's the thing. You're there's, always looking for love. I mean, do you I, really want to be in a relationship? That's the problem. Do you really, <laughs> do you really want to be in a relationship, or is part of you thinking, I'm not ready yet because I need to get more successful because you wanna. I'm you, successful you wanna, enough, but it's not the reason. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah. I think I can. I have the margin. But I think that you want to sleep with Instagram models. No, 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 no. no it's okay. not. Not even. I don't even have something that I don't want. I think that I need to work on myself. That's the right thing to say, right? Um, and what? I need to 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 become a more independent and strong person. Individual. Individual. Yeah. Well, what, that's do you, good. do you have intimacy issues when you're with women? I have separation anxiety. Nice. We got somewhere. Why do you have separation anxiety? I already know anxiety? that, though. You got somewhere. I've known this all along. Why do you have separation anxiety? I don't know. People think it's because of my relationship with my... You know, I didn't really want to get into this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> people, you want to talk about Doge some more? People think it's because of your relationship with what? What? Do we have to... Okay, fine. <laughs> Here's the thing. I'm not very close with my father. No, it's okay. It's okay. This is great. Don't laugh. Well, I guess. Well, what I mean, that's what he does to like yeah. when he gets a little uncomfortable. No, I'm not uncomfortable. I, I've, you know, I talk about this all day, all night. Usually. But it's interesting. Not with, not with like three. You'd cameras. be surprised. You'd be surprised how many people can relate to this kind of stuff. Yeah. And okay. You cool. never know. Talking about it could be helping someone else. Yeah, maybe. Bro, I sat here and talked about a year ago. I talked about putting my dog down on the podcast, and I put it out. And it was very uncomfortable to put out because I was like crying on the podcast, but I did. Yeah. I put it out there, and so many people were like, "Thank you for that." I, you know how many people have to go through? Yeah. It? No, so I it's know. interesting, though. But it's just like, if you obviously can identify a problem, then yeah. why? But why would that get in the way of you in relationships with women? Well, um, there's been a therapist who's one of the best in the biz that Joe and I both know of, and. Um, he brought up some great, great things, and this is so boring for so many people. It's not. You're I, no, your, I don't think you're so. actually in your head. It's actually not. Okay. Well, um, it's better yeah. than listening to some fucking girl write in about how she has problems about some guy who won't text her back. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I think he brought up some really interesting things uh, that uh, maybe maybe have an, have had an impact on my romantic life. You know what I mean? So, and it always has to do with your mother and your father, which is rooted in the Freudian Does it? theory. That's oh, what he so says. The Fro- okay. But that's yeah. kind of what he subscribes to, and I think he's right about a lot of it. It's fascinating stuff. But don't you think if you were just this open with someone that you were actually into, then that's great. Just how you are right now in the no, podcast. No, but I, I am. Usually. Oh. Yeah, yeah, Because then I don't It think still that, doesn't work. I don't... Well, then, that, then they're not, not the right optimistic. person for you. Well, you know... I think if someone's not down... Uh, open enough to just hear you out and hear things that you're like after the dating uh, after a couple dates and you're just hanging out and you're getting to know each other and you talk about this kind of stuff I think that's the kind of stuff that makes people fall in love with each other because they get to know them and they hear the vulnerability in someone does that make sense yeah but it seems to be like also when you talk about yourself and you're honest a lot of people and you're right maybe this is like a litmus test of like finding out who's trash but a lot of people don't <laughs> like what you had to they want you to pretend like you're something else you know what i mean or they but want the, something else you a, have to you're pretend not like. doing this date one or two this is like when you get to really this is like date yeah. four or five yeah listen if someone's if someone's gonna i mean i'm not yeah oh sorry go ahead go ahead oh well, i want i wanted to hear what that outburst was gonna be <laughs> I'm not out there dating, by the way. I'm not out there like trying to like meet this person. That we all are. We all were. We all were. What <laughs> we do you all mean? Were. Yes, yeah, you I, are. What are you yeah, talking you about? Well, I'm just saying like not, not real. Okay, whatever. In the past, yeah. I mean, I've been like, at, you know, uh, hanging out. How great out. was your last post? Huh? How great was your last Which post? Which last post? The ice cream one. <laughs> Did pretty well. Yeah, but I didn't post it though. Yeah, you, I mean, you yeah. posted it on your, your Instagram. It's your account. Yeah, but I wasn't the one who did it. But yeah, <laughs> you're, you're the one acting in the video. <laughs> yeah, I was acting. Did well. It was, yeah, it was a good one. Yeah. That was a breakthrough for you. It was very hard for you to post that because you thought that, you know, maybe. <laughs> no, I mean, I. Yeah. It's a. <laughs> so, I, yeah, can, can we just give some context? I feel like we're having a conversation for us only, and then they don't know what the hell, you know. I mean, there are three people he, watching. What do you think? I mean, he doesn't know, but he's like, no, it's interesting. Can you follow? I'm lost, but it's not yeah, he's lost. Boring. Yeah, it's not boring, but he's not lost. Yeah. Why, why would you be lost? I don't know the ice cream thing. Oh, he's talking <laughs> about the ice cream thing. He's talking about. Oh, the ice. You thought you yeah. were talking Everything about. Everything else is pretty freaking relatable. Well, yeah. it's like the ice cream thing. That's oh, well, the ice cream thing. Who cares? I mean, you just go to his Instagram account and look at his last post. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you yeah. should do this thing where you post the like 
clip or yeah, like picture. Yeah, he doesn't want to do that much okay. work yet. Yeah. <laughs> when we start, hey, when we start making money, then when we start making money, I'll ask him to do. Hey, graphics you're the mo- you're stuff. the motion graphics guy. Yeah, you are the yeah, motion graphics guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, yeah, yeah. Maybe you that, guys can team up one day. So, anyways, what's up with Joe? What's up with Joe? Good job. Huh? Nice really transition. Um, what's up with Joe? Did you drink last night? No, no. Why? I don't know. I, I think I had a rocky sleep. It was a little. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you have hungover face. Yeah. No, I didn't drink yesterday. It was I don't drink on Monday. He's got a little facial hair, though. Yeah, I think it looks good on you. Well, yeah, I haven't shaved. Yeah. Yeah, keep it that I, way. No, I'm shaving today. My hair sh- and my yeah, face. Yeah, I mean, it makes it a you know. No, I'm not every... keeping it this way. I mean, it's fine. Can uh, I read I you guys a story? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Read us a story. Yeah, if you don't mind. Okay. All right, and I want you to just kind of take it in and be mature about it and be, like, you know, real. It's just a story for the week, okay? I'm going to read you a story, okay? About 17 years ago, my wife and I adopted a baby from an Asian-American family. While we knew very little details... Basically, what happened with them is that we learned they were too young for their chi- for their child. I made very little inquiries as they seemed embarrassed, and I didn't want to pry. I was just excited to have a son and couldn't have ca- and could have cared less about the parents' history, besides their current and future well being. So as long as they were healthy and willing to gift me with their child, I really did not go too much into their histories. My wife and I chose to adopt this baby because we felt for the parents and anyone that had been through the adoption process knows that it is much easier to get a non-white baby than it is to get a white one. And we wanted one now and didn't want to be on some wait list. Anyways, we adopted this beautiful, loving, affectionate, and incredible baby. It's truly lo- it was truly love at first sight for all of us. Around about two years, we started to feel a little bit of guilt about not raising him in his ethnic culture and give him, give and given that he we live in an area with a major Chinese population, it would be very easy to introduce him to his roots. So for the next fifteen years, we do everything we can to honor his ethnicity. We send him to Chin- Chinese language courses, and by five, he's fluent in Mandarin and English. He gets an adopted by a Chinese aunt and uncle. They taught him cultural things and celebrated certain holidays and take him for dim sum every couple of weeks. We've taken him to China every two years since he was eight. We weren't trying to force him to take up his culture as an other in our family, but we didn't want to rob him, rob him from it or completely whitewash him either. We try to be PC as possible and we thought we were doing the right thing. He's the best thing that has ever happened to me and my wife. There is not a day where I, do, I don't just look at him and smile warmly. I love him. Anyway, we were filling out his college apps, financial aid applications, and doing the whole thing. I go to my home office and go through some files and find his old adoption records. I'm not really paying much attention to them, and then his biological parents' surnames pop out and basically punch me in the face. His parents' last names were Park and Kim. Fuck, fuck, fuck. For those of you who do not know, those are Korean last names. My son is not Chinese. Not even a little bit. He's Korean. <laughs> oh, my God. By the way, I have not heard Oh, you didn't read either. this yet? Okay, no. yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry to laugh, but Jesus. No, I'm cold reading this, so, yeah. You, I said, s- you literally said fuck, fuck, fuck? He said fuck, fuck, fuck. Okay. I go, I said... <laughs> I mean... This guy just went through all of that through his whole life. Yeah. And made him. Okay, so I suppose uh, I just assumed it because we live near an area on the West Coast where there are a lot of Chinese immigrants and Chinese Americans have been living for generations and generations. I don't always assume every Asian is Chinese, but I did assume this was for my son. Now I have a 17 year old Korean son that thinks he's Chinese. <laughs> This is horrible. <laughs> now that I look at him, he looks incredibly Korean in comparison to all the photos of Korean men that I have just Googled. Very square jaw, very broad build. None of this ever crossed my mind. I dedicated nearly two decades to helping my son be close to his roots, and they aren't even his. I realize that I just been, I just been fucking up. I feel like a complete asshole to the 
to the ninth degree. I'm that dumb liberal white dickhead. Fuck. I have yet to disclose this to my son or wife. I honestly don't know if I ever will. Wow. I mean, if it's an honest mistake, you know, you can't. That's a real I story? Know, I don't know what you can do. 100%? Wow. I, 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 I mean, listen, I don't know if it's not 100%, but I have to assume it's a real story. Well, what's interesting is if he's noticing, like, he pointed out, like, some physical features. It's like when he was in the Chinese school, it's like, how you wonder if any of those kids he grew up with thought that too maybe if they well no because you can be a korean that was raised in china though so like so this isn't that big of a deal really it's just like a funny twist because like oh yeah because he still could have been going to chinese school you can be i mean he's just upset with himself that he thought he was chinese and not korean now when was so this is a recently this happened like the kid was born twenty years ago, and then this he just this spent is a present day. Yeah, story. Kid, yeah, the kid's like years ago. This is a present now. story yeah. found yeah. by my producer, and yeah. I called read, read it with you. Yeah, I, I, uh, I <laughs> you what? I don't. I'm trying to think if this is really fucked. Where up. was that on Reddit or something? Yeah, wow. I. Uh, that's a major fuck up, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's a moral of story here. I think. What's that? I just think that you know. People go through all the trouble of doing everything what they think is right and, you know, try to be politically correct and woke and all that. And it's ironic because he completely fucked up and now he's fucked up his kid's identity. Like he's confused. He thought he was Chinese. He's Korean. A point of the story, I think, to me is just, hey, give it a break. Just live naturally based on your current environment. You know what I mean? Stop trying to fix everything or, you know, feed something down somebody's throat or make it right. It's not right. It's all wrong. So just accept it and then it feels right wow great that was the most growth i've ever seen in you in you i'm usually you. like that really yeah that was impressive <laughs> i think you're impressed with yourself yeah it was pretty good i just I, I i think that it's also like he's american he was raised by american parents so he's american yeah well yeah it doesn't matter young, what he looks like but it makes me think like I don't know if it is real. It sounds fucked up. No, but he's is. still so young. He could still learn. He could just be multicultural, which is a great thing. Yeah, he, you know, he can learn the Korean. If he's just going to college, he's still very young. He could also, still learn the culture. I mean, just culture. be. Like, he's just got to be. Like, listen, um, it's also it is. It, you're Korean, actually. I thought you were Chinese. It's one. also good for him because China's on the rise, and they're going to be the strongest economy in the United States. So it's good. He's got a tie with a country that's like that. Fucking Korea, what do they got going on? You know what I mean? Hey. Hey. North Korea, I mean. Hey. <laughs> you don't know if he watches this. This could be one of his favorite podcasts. One of the three people watching it. Yeah. He could be one of his favorite podcasts. <laughs> no, but China is definitely a strong superpower at the moment and currently rising. So it's like, hey, if you can speak the language, read the language. Um, you know, if you feel like you're Chinese, that's like a, you know, it's a benefit. It's an advantage. Where do you guys see yourself in five years? It's hard to think about that after <laughs> after you go through a year of coronavirus. Um, who knows? <laughs> well, no, because I'm just saying because it's like anything is possible. So it's well, like that's who would have thought this would have happened? So it's just like so. Just you don't have an answer. I try to live no because my my thing is I worry about the future too much. So I want to just live in the present. Or I try my best to. That's fine. That's fine. What about you, Amir? Where do you see yourself? Because there could years? be another COVID uh, twenty-five or whatever in five <laughs> years, and then we're all fucked again. <laughs> Quite an optimistic response. Well, <laughs> at this point, sorry. <laughs> what about you, Amir? Where do you yeah, see yourself? Yeah, Joe is a very years? positive. Yeah, well, he hated it. I gotta say, he. Hate, I remember like day two of the coronavirus. We took a walk. Do you remember that? Pan Pacific Park. No, I don't remember day two. It was like day two, and he was already like, "This better not happen again." <laughs> <laughs> two days in. I don't know. I don't know. If it, it was, was like March twenty second. <laughs> Maybe. Well, yeah. we, it was a weird feeling. It really yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. I was just like, "What's going on?" Yeah. So, but yeah, I'd like to see myself successful with a wife and a kid. Or just one, maybe two. You would like to have two kids, or three or four. You would like four kids in five years. Pop them out. You quick. would. Start, you would pretty much have to start in the next six months. All right. 
Probably what one... what did I say to you maybe five years ago? Remember what I said to you? You'll Can never you tell the it. audience? Did I say something to you? No. At one point, did you like, yeah, I would like to be married with kids. And I was like, you won't. And you reminded him. Yeah, oh yeah, Kev- I remember you're like, yeah, it well, wouldn't happen for a while or whatever. It's not going to happen for a while. We're in this biz. I remember when we were at Kevin's wedding and they had just gotten married and it was really touching. You looked at Joe and said, hey, take a look at that. You'll never have that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. He will, just not for a bit. I mean, if Kevin could do it. <laughs> it's different because his was like uh, an arranged one, I believe. Right? Kind of arranged? Of, what do you mean? So he's an arranged marriage. You just made that up or for real? No, he's, he, she was forced to marry him. Oh, okay. It's an arranged marriage. At gunpoint? No, it's just <laughs> cultural. That's what she's you know. not She's not the same culture as he him. Oh, really? It's different. Yeah, you didn't realize that? No, well, I mean, I thought <laughs> she was Chinese and she's Korean. Wait, yeah. so she's, what, she's mixed. She's like white and Asian. Is she oh, half Asian? Yeah. Really? She's half Asian. And he's Middle Eastern, so but that's no why connection. He does keep her locked up. Oh yeah, yeah. Her mother's <laughs> Asian. Wait, so where do you see yourself in five years, Amir? You know, I don't really think that far out. To be completely honest with you, I don't see <sighs> really a whole lot like that. I don't think like that. I gave the same answer. You have to change, change it, it, so up. I have to make yeah. something up. Uh, yeah, in a two-story home on Melrose, with, you know, a dog in a backyard. And Two story home on Melrose. I just made it up because he didn't want me to be honest. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, but you do like. You said you would live in a nice house in this area, though. Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, would I, say, why would you live in one of these big homes and be in this area? But yeah. So, I, so I, you I, would like to own a home in on in Hollywood, West Hollywood. He likes the area. I like West Hollywood. You yeah. just said it was a hairy area. Well, I, I I said it's getting a little bit sketchy, and that's why I'm gonna have. There's to There's a reason why he sure. said that that he probably won't want to go into. No, it. but it's it, no, 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 no. Oh come no, on. on! No, no, no. Oh Here, come okay, on! Let's I'll hear it. I'll say this. I'll say Let's this. You don't have to talk about no, it. No, I'll Did you say get it. You have free speech. No, here's the thing. Uh, it's what I will that. say is that Something in more, five years, way a little more absurd. Go ahead. Oh, come on. <laughs> no, no. I need to hear No, that. he doesn't. This is what we're here for. No, he doesn't. No. Well, you're, you're going to leave I'm going to be the king of the neighborhood in five years. Hang back. I'm hanging back. Is he good? Hang back. Just for wide. Yeah, relax and sit back. You got the <laughs> Just job. Just for wide. I can sit up. I'll sit up closer for it. Wait, wait. So what happened? Nothing happened. I'm just saying it's getting a little dicey out here. And so for that reason. Did someone steal your bike? I don't have a bike. Did someone rob you, break into your place? No, 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 no nothing, nothing happened. Actually, nothing happened. I think you're just saying, like, recently the feeling has been... I don't know. It sounds like you uh, have a story that you're going to tell me when the cameras go off. <laughs> no. No, there's no, there's no story. Maybe if they want to watch it on Patreon. Well, because you contradicted what you were saying about the neighborhood. It? That's all. Can I'm we saying. say it on the Patreon? What, what was that's the? That's very little guess. It's never mind. I'm not going to press you. Can on we it. say what happened? Whatever you want to talk about. Can we say it for Don't the Patreon? Don't let him. He, if he doesn't want to talk about it, he doesn't have to talk. About it. Well, uh, Joe, <laughs> what are you? His agent? Yes. <laughs> Wait. Can we? <laughs> nothing happened. It's nothing happened. Can we? Like, whatever it is, can we talk about it on the Patreon? Nothing happened. It's all preemptive, but Guys. it's but it's all in his brain. Okay, I would like. Can we hear, can we talk about? But it's Patreon? it's it's just. I already kind of touched on it. It's it's literally just. I feel like I'm gonna have to, uh, put my foot down and and be sort of. Here's the thing. I feel like I'm. Uh, I don't like actually. I don't like any of this. Um, I feel like I have to just sort of. Uh, Get ready, because I feel like the times are changing here. I feel like things are getting a little dicey. Bob Dylan. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like, I feel like I'm gonna have to adapt with that. I don't really know yeah. what you just said. Yeah, you couldn't be any more vague than that. But it sounds like he'd be the guy that wants to subscribe to everything on Infowars. <laughs> Like that? the what survival meal packages, <laughs> AR-15. What happened? What <laughs> no, not, not, nothing, nothing happened. Absolutely nothing I'm did happen. <laughs> so neither of you have any goals. <laughs> no, I have 
very much have goals. I just am cautiously optimistic, given the year that we all just had. Sure, sure. Yeah. So, I just, I don't know, I feel like talking about something positive almost would jinx it. But yeah, I know, I'm striving for things. Can only get better, right? And have aspirations, yeah. But I just... Where do you where do you know. see yourself in five years? Working a lot, like uh, a father. Nice. I can see you being a father. Thanks, man. <laughs> I, 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 I would think that in five years, I will be um, 42, mm-hmm. married with at least one kid and financially stable because of myself because of not depending on any one or anyone else right and still doing the takeover but with a different producer (laughs) 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 and like you guys are asking me to do the podcast I'm like oh I'll get you on yeah, po- I'll get you on. As a post. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get you on as opposed to me like, will you guys oh, please do it? <laughs> um, and then like little things. I mean like everything that I wanted to do with the podcast I'm doing. Yeah. Like when I even started in my room, I eventually wanted to like make it a hangout in a studio and make us and like do it in a studio. And then even when we started the studio, I wanted to like make it to where I could like have really cool clips for the Instagram and like change the way my Instagram is. Yeah. promotional wise and I'm, I'm doing that and you know you just kind of keep going and you can't um expect quick results you just have to put your head down and keep going and then and, and see what happens and you never know where it will even take you i mean i don't know will i be doing this in five years who knows but maybe this takes us to something else you know what if like in two years someone comes to us and like hey would you guys want to just work on this show and do that you know who knows you just yeah. do stuff until you keep going but I have little goals that will hopefully lead to big goals. Like, obviously, I would like to be a homeowner one day, too. Yeah. I don't know what city that will be in, but I will tell you it will not be off of Melrose. No. Really? No. no. no I don't way. Want to live over here. You don't like it? There's I no don't way. want to have my son outside yeah. being next to a hairy neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> I want a clean shave and name. No, I want him to have a backyard. I also want like I, I want to be, I want I would want kids to be in a neighborhood where like I, they could like how I was you could throw a football and they're like, Oh there is, there's a car coming, let's move for a second, but there's not like a yeah. car coming every one five seconds. Yeah. Like, I feel like that's, right. that's not really here though. It's no, in the valley you could get you could be in studio. I grew studio, up I, I grew up in a fork in the road. It was a perfect baseball diamond. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. Yeah. See that's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. Like you can get that in the valley. There's places where you like I mean, even in Studio City, there's like quiet streets, like yeah. where you like you could like literally have kids running around. Yeah, um, so. yeah, like Cheviot Hills, like that area, probably have that sort of a neighborhood vibe. Yeah, that's a nice area, that sort of thing. Yeah. All right, let's talk about <laughs> let, let's let's end the show and we'll go on the Patreon. And I want to talk about we'll talk about a couple things on the Patreon. What do you want to do? What do you want to talk about for the greatest of all greatest? We'll let you get kicking, then I'll give you the. What's that? I said we'll let you guys get kicking, then we'll. We'll uh, get into the greatest. Okay, so the greatest will be a surprise. Sure. You're going to just deliver it to us. Yeah. Yeah. All right, for the, but for the Patreon subscribers, the, the, the community of subscribers that I have. Oh, before I want to bring them in, we did start for the podcast, which I'm going to go over with my, uh, the Discord. We want to start the Discord, so if you are a part of the Patreon, which is the patreon.com, you uh, uh, at a at a certain tier, you can join, and you'll be part of the Discord where you can talk to me at all times of the day. It's an app that's attached to the Takeover Patreon. So if you subscribe, then we could talk every day. You could ask suggestions, you could ask questions. We'll even have it going live on the show where I could read things that are going on. I'll be like, hey, I'm about to record soon, and then you guys could ask us questions on the current episode that's going to come out. But for those of you who are subscribed to the Patreon, uh, the next segment, we'll actually find out what is going on in his neighborhood. And then we'll get into the greatest of all time. Harrison Ford movie. (laughs) (laughs) All right. That was this week's episode. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next week.